Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another gear review. And today, we're going to talk about the jet boil cooking system on the AT. All right, and as always, features first. Feature number one for the jet boil cooking system is the main insulated uh, cup. Uh, they come in all sorts of different sizes. This one is the Sol, which I think is a 0.8 liters. Insulated cup. A feature uh, number two is the adjustable stainless steel burner. Very nice. Feature number three on the burner is the Push button igniting system. Push button. Feature number four. Drink through lid. That's what it says, right? Drink through lid. Ooh, pour spout and strainer. Oh, pour spout and strainer. Pour spout, and then it's got a little strainer thing there too. Friggin' awesome. Feature number five. The bottom doubles as measuring cup and bowl. Feature number six, which is one of the coolest, is uh, jet boils are all compatible with all of their accessories. They all just interchange with all of the different systems. Very nice. <laughs> Feature number seven is the stabilizing uh, pad. It is set up to use uh, both sizes of fuel canisters, and it's set to stabilize your cooking system on rough terrain. Stabilizer. And last, I think, is the best feature of all is that Jetboil's cooking systems are all like self-sustaining or self-packing uh, system. Everything fits inside. If I had a smaller fuel canister, it would uh, it would also fit inside as well. Uh, we do have a Jetboil uh, Sumo, which the big canisters fit in, but they're like a self-contained unit, which is super, super convenient. Um, but there you have it. Those are the features for the jet boil, at least this jet boil that we have. Now it is time to break down those features into uh, normal words and just my personal opinion of using a jet boil system on the AT. All right, first off, I wanna say that Sharon and I used the jet boil for our entire trip. Now, we did switch sizes of the cups throughout the trip, but it worked absolutely perfect for what we needed on the AT. Now, that's not to say you can't use some of the other, uh, like your pocket rocket stoves and stuff like that, but from what I saw, there was a lot of hassle that the jet boil kind of takes care of that the pocket rockets and stuff uh, don't have as like wind breaks and uh, being a self-contained unit where everything kind of clips together um, we, we had our jet boil going and it tipped over with water in it and I was able to just lean it back up because the lid kept most of the water and it didn't have to balance on top. Um, it's just a really nice system. Now I know there's going to be a lot of people out there saying that the jet boil is just too heavy and too big um, to use on the AT, especially a lot of the ultralight hikers and stuff. And yes, it is it is a little bit heavier. If you're wanting to cut down on weight and you want to use a tiny little alcohol stove, then if, if weight means that much, then that's what you're going to want to do. Um, I'll say right now, personally, weight was not an issue for us on the trail. I mean, I was between 35 and 45 pounds the entire trip. I never got down to a really super light weight. Uh, my body adjusted to it and I was able to deal with that just fine. And it allowed me to have some of the little comforts of like the jet boil stove and uh, just a couple of those little things. I didn't have to worry too much about the weight. In my opinion, the jet boil is also worth its weight in the convenience it offers in, in the cooking system and to not have to worry. So um, personally, uh, if I was to do it again, I would definitely carry a jet boil. I've even talked about doing some solo hikes and trying to cut down on weight and I still think I would bring the jet boil if I was going to bring a cooking system. Um, I've talked about maybe doing some cold camping and stuff where I wouldn't have a cooking system, but if I did, I would still bring the jet boil. It just, it is too nice to try to switch to something else that, that I would have to either get used to or could cause me just little issues. 
All right, let's get into a little bit of specifications. Um, the weight on most of the units is a pound or, or less. I think the sole is like 14 ounces for the, for the system. Now, that's without the fuel canister. They'll, they're going to be a wide variety of different jet boil systems. If you look on the website, there's a ton of them out there, and the weight's all going to vary. It is a little bit heavier than some of your other options, um, but still right around a pound. For boil time is about two and a half minutes for a half a liter, uh, and that's out of, I think that's just average over all of their systems, which is very fast. I don't know. Um, I haven't looked into like alcohol stoves and some of your pocket rockets and stuff, so I can't compare, but it was super fast on the trail to get boiling water with this. Enough talk. Let's get right into some pros and cons because there are a couple things with the system that I don't think are that good. And I'll actually kind of go over how we used our jet boil on, on the trail. Is this? That's shaking the camera. Oh no. No more arms on the table. Pros. Uh, one of the biggest pros to the jet boil cooking system is the availability for accessories and how everything just works together and it all clips on and depending on the size, there's all sorts of different sizes of cups with uh, different attachments and different burners and double burners and, and pans and frying pans and big boiling pots and there's so many different attachments that it's just like one stop for all of your, you know, cooking needs when it comes to if you're day hiking or doing a through hike or week long or just you know overnights and stuff so that is a huge pro for this system is it how elaborate it is and how much stuff there really is that goes along with it another pro to the system is uh, fuel consumption uh, I can't remember the statistics but the fuel consumption was really good uh, we could get a couple weeks out of one of these bigger containers. Now, we went with the bigger containers, even though at first they did fit into the Sumo, uh, even though they don't fit into this smaller container when the little ones did, just because we didn't want to have to constantly get new ones on the trail. Uh, between resupplies, these lasted longer, and it was just a little bit more convenient. But even the little one would last the two of us about a week, which if you're going solo, then hence solo, probably be okay with a little container and uh, having it last, you know, seven, 10 days. On to some cons for the jet boil system. Uh, one con would be this little plastic cup on the bottom is a little bit flimsy, and the way that it attaches onto the bottom just, uh, just kind of rotates on there, which is good. Our other one for our Sumo broke. Uh, because you're packing it in your pack and you're throwing it around, be careful of this because you may break it. Um, and it is very needed because of the way that the bottom of this clips on This has to stay with this shape if it gets banged up or beaten up It won't clip onto here and without that clipped on the built-in windbreak and the cook time is all going to be changed because everything is Crucial to the way this is set up. So this piece of gear being even just this light piece of pl plastic is pretty crucial to keeping this intact and it's pretty flimsy. So that's one con is you have to be a little careful with the bottom of this jet boil. Another con, I guess some people don't like the fact that this uh, insulated thing kind of slides all over the place and we'll get off there. And if it does, it could potentially get burnt. Um, I didn't think that was too bad, but you know, you can take it off if you don't like it. I think it's kind of nice because you can pick it up when when it gets real hot, but I've heard some people complain about those. Another con for the jet oil cooking system is faulty igniters. Uh, I can't tell if you can see in the video. Our igniter still works. Uh, it gets a little bit of buildup on the end of it, and it helps. We had a little nail file. Uh, it helps to kind of file down on that igniter to keep it working well, and we still had issues sometimes with the igniter working. Uh, I always kept a backup mini Bic lighter doesn't make much of a difference. You turn it on, you just flick the Bic lighter, and it works just as well. But there's a lot of complaints if you look around. A lot of people complain that the igniters aren't real good. Uh, I think maybe you know the newer models are probably even better. The technology gets better. But I really don't think it was that big of an issue. But it's one thing to remember. And you can even see that stuff will build up on there. And if you just kind of break it off or, or uh, uh, clean it up a little bit, it will make the igniter work better. Another con for the cooking system is they encourage you to keep everything 
inside. If I had a smaller fuel container, I would show you that it does fit inside here. They encourage you to fit everything inside of your jet boil. Your jet boil has got water in it all the time and very rarely are you able to get it completely dry. And I'll talk a little bit more about how we use the cooking system in just a bit. But if you don't get it completely dry, these fuel canisters will rust. And by putting your fuel canisters in here, uh, you can tend to get rust in the inside of it. And who wants to cook out of something that's all rusty? So by having everything stored inside of the unit, uh, it's good that this is stainless steel, but the fuel canisters aren't. That adds a little bit of a, a con to me because uh, of the amount of water in there and that it doesn't work real, real good. So there's a con. One thing that we did to keep uh, the moisture down inside of our jet boil, especially for packing things up, like I said, it can rust your containers, is we would, after cooking, we would, uh, I would kick the burner back on just for a split second. It would heat up the jet boil and evaporate the water. Now, you should be very careful when doing that. You should never really have your jet boil on when there's nothing inside of it because you can overheat it and you can, uh, you can kind of warp the bottom of it, which will really kind of ruin it and it'll make it not nearly as efficient and it may not fit together properly. So be careful with that. The other thing you can do, and we always had just a little bit of a, a hanky that I would wipe out the inside of. And I'd also store this inside of the jet boil so that whatever I put inside, anyway, so I would store this, my computer just crashed. Uh, so I would store this inside of my jet boil. It would, uh, absorb any of the extra moisture in there and also act as like a cushion for any items that I put in here to keep things from rattling around. Now this could tend to get kind of stale so you'd want to make sure that you washed it occasionally, rinsed it out, hung it off your pack, make sure it was nice and dry. But that would keep uh, the stuff from inside of your jet boil from getting wet and or rusting. That's another thing that we ne we didn't ever do with our jet boil. You can see the inside of these are very clean. We never actually cooked inside of the jet boil. Um, if you do and you're not paying very close attention, it's hard to get them simmering or just to have low heat. You're gonna burn stuff on the inside. We heard of someone trying to cook an egg inside of it and it just made a mess. Uh, cleaning is a pain. I don't suggest anybody actually cooks inside of their jet boil. We only use our jet boil for boiling water. And that and, and nothing else uh, because we always did all of our cooking outside of the jet boil in plastic bags now ziploc uh, this is just your regular um, pasta sides which we ate a lot of on the trail but uh, just your ziploc freezer bags are a good brand of bag that uh, that is capable of holding boiling water uh, you need to look at the the box or whatever bags you're you know try to go freezer bags are the ones that I've heard work and you want to look on the box to make sure that it doesn't say do not use for boiling water but what we would do is just boil the water in our jet boil and then dump the water into these bags seal them back up and thanks to Eddie on the trail uh, she made us and gave us this little pouch and it's a reflector for your windshield of your car and uh, it's just folded up and taped with penguin duct tape. And basically, after putting the boiling water in our bag, we would put the bag inside of this little pouch and that would keep all of the heat in and we just leave it in here for a little bit and it would cook it up and it worked really, really good. It kept all of the, uh, the cleaning of the jet boil. We didn't have to do that, it was only water in there. And when we were done, we would just eat out of these bags, which are easy enough to eat out of with a spoon, fold them inside out, you can lick the bag all out. Uh, you can reuse it a couple times or throw it away and get new ones. Uh, it really helped save on uh, cleanup. And it also gave us the ability to, to sit down at lunch, cook our dinner in these bags, put it in the pouch, put it in the pack, and then hike until whenever we want it, hike until it's dark. And then our dinner's already cooked. All we have to do is sit down, unpack everything, pull out the food and eat. Another nifty part of our cooking system was we found this uh, Minute Maid uh, orange juice container and our jet boil fit right inside of it, which worked really good uh, because it packed nice inside of there and it kind of protected the jet boil, that bottom of it that I was telling you about, kind of protected that a bit. And this is what we use for low water sources, being able to scoop into a water source that was that was very shallow 
and uh, to collect water or to fill up with water and put a little bit of like Bonner soap in there and to wash things out in. This was our little wash tub, water collector, that kind of thing, and it paired really well with the jet boil. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that's what I know about the jet boil cooking system. Uh, if you're looking for a cooking system to use on the AT, I would not hesitate to use the jet boil. Uh, I know that it's a little bit heavier than some of your other options, but it makes up for it in convenience. The AT is hard enough on its own to, to make it even harder just to cut weight to use something more difficult. It was not worth it for us. I say overall, the jet boil gets an nine out of 10, nine and a half out of 10. There wasn't that many things wrong with it to even make me think it's not a perfect product. Uh, the little things that are wrong with it, they probably have fixed in some of your more recent uh, jet boil products. This is a little bit older, igniter, stuff like that. Um, and nothing that wasn't easily, you know, easy to deal with. It never failed us. It was basically a perfect product for us to use. Now, I understand that it's not for everyone and there's gonna be a lot of people out there that are standing by their alcohol stoves and their pocket rockets and that's great. Uh, this is just my opinion. And as always, if you don't like it, you can go take a hike. Bye bye.